so in this episode, we're not doing frames. Oh, well, we are, but we're not going to show you much of them because we want to get these done really, really fast so we can move on to some good stuff. Right, so while we're waiting for the paint to dry on the frames that we aren't going to film putting in because we don't want to bore you, we need to fit the beam shelf next. So to fit the beam shelf, they're basically big straight pieces of oak. It's going to be a bit awkward to bend them and there's going to be three of them. But what I'm predicting is that the, the hull's going to try and straighten itself out because we haven't got any deck beams here because there was one missing and we've, and we've cut one off to gain access. So I think what we're going to do is once these, these frames are in, we're going to brace off the deck here. So this deck is obviously part of the whole hull, pushed against the other side. So we're going to brace here so when the new beam shelf comes in, it hopefully tries to, t tries to retain the right shape of the hull because we don't want a wonky hull, do we? No, we want it, to, want it to match both sides. So yeah, I think that's our next job. Beam shelf! Exciting! Beam shelf, baby! <laughs> So one, two, three, four, five new frames. And we've even nailed all the stringers. So we've got no excuse now. We can move on to some bigger, chunkier work. Which is the beam shelf and the stem. So we've had a really good poke at the stem. It's found a bit of rot there. So I think we're going to cut it around here. Give you some perspective. It's around there somewhere, up there. And then we're going to extend it right up there somewhere. So then eventually the bulwarks can then attach to it. Give us, we've got a big anchor roller as well. So we've got two more, two more anchors we can potentially pile. That's going to be attached to it. So it's, it's quite a structural part of the bow, isn't it? Because obviously the very top of the stem is rotten, but we won't know how far down we need to go until we start cutting it up. So I think next job is to take this breast hook off. Is that the right word, Gem? Yeah. Breast hook, right. So let's get that off and then we'll see where the day takes us. Actually, we'll take that off. I might carry that to the van because we've actually got a load of the beam shelf material in the van which we processed in the workshop the other day. So we're at the workshop at the moment and we are processing woods for our new beam shelf. And it's also a bank holiday and it's my birthday and he's still got me working. Good wife, aren't I? So boring milling all this wood. It's like... <laughs> I think it's like a little slow machine, isn't it? But, so we'll go. When we go for a day at the beach, we take our Anchor 767 powerhouse with us. It's got really durable wheels and is really easy to tow. Its unibody drop proof design is impact resistant and also UV resistant, so it makes it perfect for a day at the beach. The Anchor 767 powerhouse is perfect for any off-grid situation. It's got enough sockets for all your appliances that you could ever need. Now we have to wait 10 minutes for our pieces on the beach. Oh, and we've got chips to come as well. Oh, we've got chips. <laughs> How cool is that? We're going to get people coming up to us in a minute saying, How much are the chips? <laughs> oh, we can start selling chips on the beach. Yeah, I think we need a big sort of sign on the beach saying, Chips. I don't know. How much chips? Chips are quite a bit. 3 pounds 50. Yeah, there you go. We need a lot of cones though. Beach is ready. Oh. Would you like a pizza? Oh, thank you very much. I've never ate pizza at the beach before. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Perfect. Anchor Solux Fans Day will begin on the 25th of June. There'll be great discounts and countless benefits, so remember to check it out. The link's in the description below. <laughs> at least the, uh, the ground's really dry. 
Because of the warm weather, isn't it? We haven't even got our wellies on. We haven't got our wellies on for a change. Ugh. Feels like a long way when you've got heavy weight on your shoulders, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> wow, never walked this way to the road before. It's usually dead muddy. Oh my god, how did you do all of them? Okay, so to get this breast took off, I think all that's holding on is this big bolt, but this bolt goes all the way through and I think it's there and then it comes out there somewhere. So let's try and give the, the nut a bit of a turn. We'll, um, we'll give it a bit of a clean first. Did you do it right? I was using squid protection. <laughs> Bit of lube. Right, I've been told to put a hat on because I might get my little baldy head burns. <laughs> Righty tighty, lefty loosey. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, it's spun. It's spun. Because it's just rotten, isn't it? At the front. It's spun. Oh no, what are you going to do? Oh yeah, it's just literally <laughs> the wood's rotted away. Go on, Gem. Right, so what we need is some mole grips on this end. Maybe if you can mole grip it, there, instead of hanging over the front. No, I can hang over this one. Well, no, it's got a, you've got a good place to get in. Get a hold on there. Right, engineering tips from Gemma. <laughs> She's looking at me all funny. Oh, it's, it's not that one. <laughs> not that one? <laughs> That's a different one. <laughs> you sure? Yeah. That's a trunnel. You know what a trunnel is? No. I'm not going to tell you. Okay. Right. Go on then. Um, hang on, she's going to say that I'm sat on the thing that we're going to undo. What, what are you going to say? You sat on the thing that we're going to undo. <laughs> At least I'll fall back into the Don't land on my head. <laughs> well, this, is, this is the worst place to film ever and the lighting's rubbish. A quick turn. Okay, stop the tiny bit more. Stop there. Uh, why is the camera always in the way? Tiny bit more. Stop there. Okay. Give it a slight turn now. Okay, there's something's happened. Come on. Hold on. No, don't fall on my head. It will fall off. Right. Stop. Stop. Before you pull it out anymore, get off it. Check that out. That's a beauty, isn't it? Look at it, it's mint. Uh, what do you do with your not on wash now, Jim? Well, the washers are a bit um, 
Ah, they've spaced it out because they didn't put they didn't cut enough thread on it. But yeah. Okay. So I think we'll potentially be reusing that because like it's got the angle on it. So obviously the, the angle of the stem and it snugged it all up. Alright, let's get this breast off. Is that the only thing that was holding it on? Nah, that's probably more stuff. Ready? Right, there's some fixings here, but that's just going into the beam shelf, so that's being changed. Ooh. Whoa, right, hold on. What you sat on's a bit unsupported now. There we go. This is, I think, where the bow roller was bolted to. So it's quite an integral part of this, because obviously the bow roller go, goes on it. But what I was saying to Gemma, there's no straight grain in it. So they would, they would have found like a nook in a tree, I think. You know, and then cut it out of that, because obviously all the grain goes around. So when we build this, I think we have to laminate it, but then laminate it curved. I don't know, we'll figure that bit out. Plan A is because you know I'm gonna I'm gonna call them something because we might move on to Plan B or something. Oh, I've just nearly fell for a hole. We're gonna obviously this these I don't know what these are called, and um, so yeah we're just going with these pieces of wood at the front that are each side of the stem post. Obviously, are rotten as well. So we need to go and manufacture some new ones because when we take this beam shelf out and take them out we want to add structure back in as quickly as we can so plan a is i'm just going to go and get some measuring tools because if this comes out in like flakes we don't know how big it is so i'm going to measure it first then we're going to take the beam shelf off take that two blocks of wood off and then we're going to go back to the workshop and make some more our measurements for that piece of wood. As you see here, here and here. <laughs> I want to cool me out backwards, don't I? <laughs> I'm trying to stop my neck burning. <laughs> I've ordered you another hat though, that'll protect your ears and stuff. Right. Do you want to yeah. tell everyone, is this my like grab handle? No. That's a cool hat, right? So I've never seen it, I'm not really into baseball, but that's basically so you can clip it onto yourself. You don't lose your hat. Oh. When I you can do a dance now, friend. When you're boating, you're meant yeah. to tie it to the back of your head then and not strangle yourself with it. <laughs> it's not a noose. <laughs> it's a nuisance. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, I... what was I saying to Gemma then? If we're going to do this this bolt here or cut it off or something, this, this part of the beam shelf should be away, then that'll give us the angles at the end. Spinning. Spinning. Yeah! 
we've got some very upset planks down here, haven't we? So, I can actually get some of these screws out to the ones that hold this big thingy on here. Because they're starting to come loose. It's going to be quite a tedious job, but... <laughs> Maybe we can get Gemma to do it. So, as with everything that we do, we sort of take a piece off and it uncovers some more crap. So we can't put this beam shelf in now with this big hole in this plank. And we've never... There's actually a hole on this side as well. There is a lot, it goes all the way through, doesn't it though? Hello. Um, so there's no point continuing to rip everything out because we can't put the beam shelf in or them new, even if we go and make these new bits, we can't put them in while there's a big hole in the plank. So we need to now go and find um, some suitable wood. <laughs> so before we take any more stuff out now, we are going to pack away and should we go and see if we can find some wood? So we are back at my favourite shop, Hardwood Sales in Liverpool, um, because we need some wood. So the only man that we trust to sort it out is John. We've got our material now for the, the very front triangle parts right, right about so now we need to get the piece for the apron which is the inner stem i do feel really really bad that they've had to move loads of stuff out of the way to be able to get to our new stem post up there so we are going for an iroko stem post Careful you don't get run over around there. This is why you wear a high vis. You know I mean safety, but well, this this is actually helping because you otherwise you're blending with all the wood. I'm not that brown. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't look like she's being career so in offence anyway. Only in different colour. Different colour, no? <laughs> Sorry. Is it heavy? No. Now, I've just got to say, John doesn't usually just let people come down here with like and start like cutting their own wood and stuff, but we get away with it a little bit. Do you want a bit of saw, John? I don't know how many boats you could build in here out of all this. But there's one victory. We could actually fit Sarinda in here. I wonder if John had given us a bit of workshop space. This is definitely my favourite, favourite wood shop. 
all the guys are absolutely lovely when I'm just walking around with the camera and yeah, they're all really, really nice. So, right. I'm not filming from the BBC or something. <laughs> um, time to go and settle the bill. We've got wood. So we're gonna spend some time now in the workshop and get these this plank material down to size. Um, so we've gone Iroko for the planks. And then for them big blocks at the front, we're gonna use oak. So let's get these boards processed. So our, our plane of thickness uh, thingy me do dad over there can only plain or thickness 200 mil wide so what we're going to have to do is cut these down to 200 mil pieces get the right thickness and then what we'll do is when we're actually fitting to the boat then we'll glue them all together in position because i'm slightly concerned about the curvature of the hull as well so if we glue them all up now so it's one big flat piece then when we go screwing it together it might crack so if we can like fit it all and actually glue it in position i think that'd be good we don't even know what they're called or what they do. I think they just add a bit of bulk to the very pointy like, end. But blocks for the ends of the planks. Yeah, like possibly. Yeah, there's quite a few bits of planks at the end there. So yeah, you're probably right. But you can you can make it up as you go along, can't you? Yeah. Not make up as you go along. You can learn along the way. But we've also got to adapt for the tools that we're working with because we're not a big wood machine shop. No. So we haven't got big fancy chip saws and stuff like that no. so you've got to sort of compromise no. and, and work just with yeah. what you've got we've got a chisel we've got a um we've got a jigsaw and a screwdriver which is sharpened to a chisel <laughs> and a panel saw and a panel saw right so the first job panel saw right so i've temporary put a piece of wood on it to give us a straight edge so the fence, so you can run down the fence on the saw. I just noticed then when you look down it, through these, these silly GoPro things, everything looks a bit wonky. But it's straight. That one's finished, so now we'll get the other side of the board and we'll do the same to that. 200 by 40 mil board, but we only need to make it 200 by, what was the measurement, Jim? 30 mil. 30 millimeters, so you need to take 10 millimeters off. I'm sure if we had a big band saw, we could like send it through the band saw and make it a bit easier, but so now we've got to do all the oak through this little machine. Is it going to last? The blade isn't the best anyway, is it? <laughs> we'll see how far we get. annoying really because it was 40 mil thick we've had to reduce it down to 30 mil so you're thinking it's just so much waste so much time as well but that's all we've got we'll learn from ne for next time won't we cool <laughs> right so now we need to probably cut these to length now so we're going to go slightly up on our original measurements um then we'll see if we've got enough material there um 
to basically do with that particular job on the boat. Another thing to add, the little machine did very well. I was expecting to like go kaboom halfway through, so not bad. So I'm just going to square the end off and then I've set my fence now to 530 and that'll give us exactly the same piece of it. So as if you see me like me little pencil mark there, that's the only area that we're going to be operating on. But then I was thinking... <coughs> but then I was thinking, what would Leo do? <laughs> what Leo would do is do like a funny notch in it, what it was called, like a lap, lap joint or something like that. So we'd basically have, so you've got like... Oh, I'm not really good at this, doing that through the camera. So you'd basically join them like that, wouldn't you? One piece, two piece. So do we have, should we put like a, um, a thingy in them? So they lap. Because we can. Right, let's back to the saw and we'll cut it all out and we'll get the chisel out and sharpen sharp up the screwdriver and we'll give it a scrape. Well, because we're not very bright, let's put some little marks on it where we're going to cut it out and that will then eventually overlap there and the same on this board. Obviously this crack on the end doesn't matter because it's going like that. Do you think Leo, Leo would be impressed? I think I'm impressed. <laughs> I would say that's the first like, bit of proper woodwork. <laughs> proper say that, joint. I would say it's proper. <laughs> nice bit of thick and epoxy in it. will soon fix that, won't it? Yeah. <laughs> right, so they're done now. So what's next then? So we need to make some planks, don't we? Because obviously we found our, our bad plank. So we're going to be using a Roco, but what we need to do now is put this through the planer. So we've got a bit of an issue with the planks when we were measuring them yesterday. Um, some of them were coming out at 122 mil wide, some of them were coming out at 130 and everywhere in between. So what we're going to do is we're going to just cut them at 130 mil wide because that was the widest one we measured. And then I think when it comes to putting them in the boat, they might just have to be cut down to suit the space that we're putting them in. So we've just turned these beauties into that from one of them. Oh, I just fell over. I just fell over. <laughs> Save the camera though. So these are Roco planks uh, measuring at 20 mil. Um, but our planks are measured them about 14 mil yesterday. So we need to uh, plane them down in our good old planer again. And that's beautiful wood. Beautiful when it's all plain, isn't it? So these are now at the right thickness. So we'll basically take these over to the boat now and then we'll cut them down size or we'll remove the old one and use it as a sample, I don't know. What's quite amazing about today is how much sawdust we've generated. You can actually see the colour difference from the oak to the Aroka. Yeah, it's like sediments. You know, I caught all of the oak today and then all, all of the Oroco now is up here. Cool. 
That didn't really pan out as we expected, did it? No. I think at the beginning of the episode we said, right, we're going to put the beam shelf in. Yeah. We, like, we <laughs> thought we were going to get a beam shelf in today, but that's life, isn't it? You know, yeah. that's the thing with the boat. You you take one bit off and you mm. find more and you open a can of worms. Yeah. But, but the biggest problems on our boat is very high up where all the fresh water's out there. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah. We need to, we need to, we need to do it right. Then we've had a film about the right materials now, so come back next time to watch us change our first ever plank. Oh god, yeah. That'd be fun, wouldn't it? That'd so, be interesting. So we've just ordered all, all of the, because there's loads of little, little nails, aren't they, and stuff like that. So, so like so. bronze screws yeah. and things like that. So yes. So right, come back next week and see how we change it in a plank on a double diagonal boat. Easy. <laughs> Cheers guys. See you all later. Thank you all so much for watching yeah. and thank you to all of our patrons and sponsors who support our videos. Yes. We really, really appreciate yeah. it. Thank because you. wood isn't cheap. Oh yeah. <laughs> even, yeah. Even though it grows on trees. Oh, yeah. it <laughs> Who bought it? So we've got Neil here to pick up his prize. Yeah, brilliant. Um, there you go. Thank you. It, it's going to be massive help so, to me and the kids. So it's not brand new. I have used it myself. I, I thought I'd test it for you at the beach. Gemma, it's it's fine. So it might come with some free sand. No, oh, that's all right. <laughs> but that's all okay. the uh, all the charging plugs are in oh, there. Oh, brilliant! Thank you. So you've got a nice bag. So you can also charge it off your car as well. So it's got a cigarette oh, lighter. Okay. Charge off your car. Super. Um, plug and then that is so you can connect Solar any panels. solars and yeah, stuff that's like fine. that. Yeah, yeah. And then it's all in there somewhere in the depths. There we go. It's, it's really much, much. I appreciate it. I'm, I'm still in shock about it. <laughs> so, it's, um... so, just for everyone at home, obviously, you've never met us, you don't no, know no, us, no, you no, entered no. on the live. I've, I've, I live in the other side of, of the country. So I, I live down in Devon and Cornwall, so it's a long old trip for me to come up here. But it's it's been wonderful spending the day and seeing something that, that, I've, that, I've, that I've seen. I've, I've been watching since episode one, so. Wow. So I'm really happy, and I'm really happy that it's going to allow you to get oh, yeah. off-grid a bit more with your yeah, son yeah. as well. Yeah, 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 he'll, he'll, he'll have a field day. Thank you ever so, so much again. And uh, yeah, brilliant. Right, let's get it in your car. Yeah, superb. It's some um, rosehead rose head nails from a 1722 Ritalind yes. wow. building from the dockyard, which is the largest one in Western Europe. What? It relates back to when the Navy start, started. But yeah, they're, they're, they're originals. That's you like some, someone a very long time ago made them and knocked them in. There was what, another building, you say? Yeah, yeah, that was 1772 Ritalind building, which was the storage buildings for the old wooden wooden chips. What? And they're all hand, hand made. Yeah, of course, yeah. Well, there wasn't any machines back then making no, them, was there? No, 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 it's, it's all uh, anvils and. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the beams in the building are sort of like that size. Yeah. So, yeah. That is awesome, isn't it? It's even older than me. <laughs> <laughs> so. Is it in better condition though, Robbo? Yeah. Probably, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's from the. Um, it's it's uh, one of the written buildings in their largest naval dockyard in Western Europe, so. Wow, that's awesome! Thank you so oh, much. Oh, that's just fine. There was nothing. It's, it's no the kids, the kids wanted to, to say something, and I mentioned that you're into hi history, so they dived in the uh, cupboard and dragged out those, and we we made them. So that is awesome. I love it. <laughs>